Here's an idea. Reality is disappearing and your mobile phone is to blame. Saying that I love my phone is beyond understatement. It's like saying that I love my record collection, coffee, or pants. My pants! It's such an inextricable part of my life, I can't imagine what I'd do without it. I mean, I'd be fine, but sort of like without pants, I'd feel a little naked. I love being able to find restaurants, get directions, use Twitter, send emails, take pictures. Oh yeah, and like make phone calls or whatever. No, but really, think about it. How often do you use your phone as a phone in comparison to the other billion things that it does? Just take a look at mobile phone advertisements. They advertise recording, documenting, sharing, personalization, productivity, aloofness, disinterest, Interest, disconnectedness, the mediated experience of everyday life. Wait, what was I talking about? Oh right, mobile phone ads rarely show people actually making phone calls. It's all this girl at the concert, these guys with the dots, this phone that is you, these people who aren't even looking at one another. These people experience the world, their lives, through a phone. Their friends and even their selves are transformed into the information transmittable by their I, Moto, Sung, Bo, Berry. And because it's an advertisement, they have a great time while they do it. And are very attractive, and very well dressed, and the language of advertising is another video entirely, but the point being that while it might be weird, there is probably a grain of truth here. We use our phones constantly, for everything. They are great and helpful and make us more powerful. Ubiquitous computing is awesome and important. But there is a difference between technology as utility and technology as lens. Like, let's say you're at a Nickelback show and you're taking photos, like the whole time. Are you really even at the show if all night long there's a screen between you and this handsome gentleman? People two rows behind you and French post-structuralist philosopher and all-around grumpy Gus Jean Baudrillard might say, no. no. In Simulacra and Simulation, Baudrillard talks about Jorge Luis Borges' extremely short story on exactitude in science. In it, Borges describes an empire which has made a map, quote, whose size was that of the empire, and which coincided point for point with it. Over time, the impossibly large map becomes part of the landscape. Representation and thing being represented become, confusingly, one and the same. For Baudrillard, this is an imperfect but beautiful allegory for the simulation, and what he calls hyperreality. A reality constructed of images, some of which might be of Chad Kroger, which represent, but also mask, true reality. The real, Baudrillard says, has been murdered by an endless stream of images. He had a knack for the dramatic. Simulation, then, is the process which creates hyperreality the new real. Baudrillard writes that the real is produced from miniaturized cells, matrices, and memory banks, models of control, and can be reproduced an indefinite number of times from these. Welcome to the desert of the real. Is any of this ringing a bell? Like, when you look at photos of Chad on your phone, are you fondly remembering the show, or are you consuming the Empire's map of it? And when you share those photos, like those people are constantly doing on those advertisements, are you sharing an experience, or are you sharing an idealized reference, some kind of empty symbol? Is your experience of a sunset still the same if your strongest reaction is, oh my god, you guys, that is some good Instagram? Are people still people if they're expressed solely by SMSs, Foursquare notifications, tweets, or status updates, or worse yet, solely by YouTube videos. I mean, how am I not myself? 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 Okay, I'll admit that some of this seems a little alarmist. Screens and digital representations of things are everywhere. If we didn't want to experience the world this way, we wouldn't, right? Phones, tablets, computers, video games, they all contribute to this hyper-reality, and we seem to be doing just fine. We still relate to one another, have personal experiences, and senses of self. I am a golden god! And we're less bored, which is great, because people hate being bored. Being bored stinks. And also, we're more connected and more knowledgeable. That can't be all bad. Well, the point might not be that this arrangement is bad rather that it's different, majorly different. Recording, living, capturing, experiencing all happen constantly alongside one another, thanks in no small part to mobile phones. And it's only becoming easier, or as Baudrillard might say, more seductive, to think of real life as images on a screen, to combine the map and the thing being mapped. Because it's more convenient, less risky and challenging, it's cleaner, more attractive, it looks, as a matter of fact, a lot like a cell phone commercial. What do you guys think? Are the things you experience on your phone real life? Let us know in the comments. And if you're not taking pictures of Chad Kroger right now, 
please subscribe. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Let's see what you guys had to say about happy birthday and copyright. So first and foremost, a bunch of people pointed out some awesome videos that you should watch. Uh, if you haven't seen them, you should check out CGP Grey's Forever Less One Day, uh, the Barats and Beretta Happy Birthday song, uh, the really amazing Everything is a Remix series, and uh, this really great video response made by Plus Econ. So we'll put those somewhere, and then also links in the description. Emma Long says that things that are very catchy should be restricted from copyright because they're going to get stuck in your head and you're going to want to use them and distribute them anyways, which I think a lot of people would very much disagree with that, but is an idea that I love. Dark Myro says that he doesn't necessarily think copyright is a bad thing in and of itself, but that it is sometimes used for less than good purposes, and wonders why Congress is so crazy about copyright enforcement recently. I think I have an idea. Uh, I'll give you a hint. It makes the world go round and rhymes with shmoney. Red Rookie Rebel wonders whether or not the Idea Channel videos are protected by copyright and if clips of them can be used in a My Little Pony documentary. The answer to both of those questions is yes. Um, I'm pretty sure that actually fair use will protect you in that case, but even if, whatever, go crazy. You can use it. Rico McGuffin wonders whether or not every song is protected from public performance the same way that Happy Birthday is, and it's kind of complicated. When it's just you and your friends singing a song or like, you know, a small group of people, that's one thing, but when it gets into public performance, especially in a place that's commercial, like a restaurant or uh, like a music hall, that's when rights holders might want some cash. Elroniel says that they believe nothing should be protected by copyright and that should actually be illegal to own an idea, which is something that I actually kind of disagree with as far left in the copy fight as I tend to stand. Uh, there's actually a really great paper, uh, we'll post a link in the description, um, about the uses and importance and history of intellectual property. It's really good, you should check it out. To Trigfire and a bunch of other people who asked why I was so upset that Disney bought Star Wars, it's not necessarily that I think they're gonna make a bad movie, it's just that they are two organizations who are historically very well known for holding on very tightly to their intellectual property, which is can be a little scary. So that's why, that's why I was upset. And finally, there's actually a little cause for celebration because Idea Channel recently reached 100,000 subscribers. So I just wanna say thanks to everybody for being such an awesome community, for writing amazing comments, for always impressing us and coming on this weird idea journey with us. So in celebration, I'm gonna dance like a fool for a little while. Ready? <laughs> Thanks.